Because you cannot ah, I'm at Wongezia here. Zakayo, 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 Zakayo. And then you see, I rebuke the spirit in the Kenya of oppression. It will never listen to you. Because you are the one who is opening that door for oppression. So don't pray until the posts of your heart have prepared. And you see, I love oppression. Listen, the word of God says that we need to pray for them. For us to be in peace and enjoy the life in this land, we must pray for them. That's number one. Number two, we need to know that it's God who have allowed them to be in that position. So we have to honor God. He have allowed them. So pray, in, no matter how things look like, how things are thick in your family, in your business, at your workplace, accept and position yourself as a son of God. Cohere us together with the Christ. Can you imagine if you chose today to serve God as Jesus Christ served him? Think. Think. Prayer is not just walking and saying because you have a list of things and then you start going on your knees and praying. You'll just make noise after noises after noise after noise. But at the end of it, you are sweating. Ampit miliote zata. Umuangi in tongues from beginning to end. But nothing has moved. Because the posture of your heart have not embraced the sonship inheritance. Right thinking, conduct, attitude, your attitude. So you mess and do everything. You pray for this person. And then you are praying for that person. But you meet this person. And you pray again for that person. You understand? It could be your boss. It could be your workplace. And then you go, man of God, pray for us. The business is not working. Sioni, city council, man of God, pray for us. It cannot change the posture of your heart. You have not embraced the sonship victory. So we are not just going to gather here and say we are going to pray and things to change. We have to understand this scripture because it gave me some kind of thinking to study the three words, racist, fervent, and effective. You might not be effective. Many Christians are filled with the Holy Spirit, but they have not accepted the lead of the Holy Spirit. That's why you will struggle even in your prayer and everything. Some people, very few, in fact, statistics say that only 15% get result of their prayers. Now, that is something to ponder. 15% they are sure when they pray they'll get the result. What about the rest? That is not the will of daddy. That is not the will of daddy. You know, Nilipo wana kwalisti, I'm the one starting. I expected daddy to take over first. You know, you raise the temperature in the spirit. So I said, this thing, we have to do it like Father Lake. Here we are. See, dear brethren, we are about to pray. And some of the scripture that God gave me, and I want to lead you in this prayer, is that we are gathering here as gate watchers. Gate? And the scripture is Isaiah 62, 7. Isaiah 62, 7. I'm just taking only 10 minutes. 64, 7, 6 to 7, 62, Isaiah. He said, I have set watchmen upon you walls, O Jerusalem, who will never hold their peace day or night. So we are just not praying here. Na kwa <laughs> secret place, there's no fire burning. It has to be some, it has to be your nature. You know, when you understand the nature of God, that you need to commune every time with your father. So it's not just to hear. I have set the watchmen upon your wall, O Jerusalem, upon this nation. O son of virtue, we are the watchers upon this nation. Who will never hold their peace day or night? You will not relent praying day and night. Let this be a fire that ignites you to next dimension of prayers. Desire that is not just going to be today encounter. Let you encounter Christ in your hiding place. Amen? So this is like we're lighting fire and putting fire. And kindling fire and reviving. Where you have been feeling I prayed for this is not going to change. It's going to change. Because God honors unity. Amen? Amen? So Isaiah said that night, day, day or night, you will uh, put the Lord in remembrance in his promise. Keep not silent and give him not rest until he establish Jerusalem and make her uh, praise in the earth. So number one, you are gate watchers. Is everything going to go wrong? It might be gate watcher for your ministry, it's going to be for your family, it's going to be for your business, economy, our nation. 
Whatever God have called you to be a gate watcher. Be prepared. Amen. Number two, the scripture I want to share with you uh, is about the heart of repentancy. 2 Corinthians 7, 8. 2 Corinthians 7. We are starting from 8. It says, For though I made you sad with my, lit my letter, I did not regret it, it though. I did regret it though. Seeing that the same letter made you sad, but only for a little while. Now I rejoice now that you were made sad, but because your sorrow resulted into repentance, for you were made sad in godly way, that you might not be injured by us in anything. For God's sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, about which there will be no regress. But the sorrow of the world produces death. For observe this very thing grieved in the godly way, that honestly it produces you. It produced in you what clearing of yourself, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what demand for justice. In everything, you have shown yourself to be clear in this matter. Therefore, verse 12, therefore, though I wrote to you, I did not do it on account of one who had done the wrong or on account of one who had suffered for wrong, but the out of care for you in the sight of God it might appear to you. This scripture was God bringing us back. This kind of stronghold in our mind that have caused most of us not to experience the answers of our prayer. You know, sometimes we love our pastors and we love our churches, which is good. But when you position them on a higher level than the word of God, there's a problem. So when you come here to pray and you're listening to people speaking in tongues, this pastor actually told me, I'm not a devil. There's someone who told me speaking in tongues in a devil. Because how can you speak what other people cannot hear? I know that is also there. And probably today you'll be given direction. And you say, ah, you know, as we normally pray like this, there's kind of religion stronghold also in the mind of people. You know, there's a religion stronghold where it teaches people how things should be done. It has orders. So you have to start like this, do like this, raise your hand and do, without understanding the meaning of it. So you believe that if I pray the way they are praying, or if am I directed differently, if not done by my pastor, it cannot work for me. The religion stronghold is where church believe that things have to be done this way. No matter the lead of this Holy Spirit counseling what you are saying, you are saying, no, sisi hufanya hivi. And I do tell people that people who believe, brethren or men who believe in their pastors and church doctrine, more than the word of God, they are already lost. They are already lost. So you have been told, your mind, how you have been mentored so well that you have to spend 40 days to experience the grace of God. You have to spend, like in the mountains, such a places for you to receive God. This happens because some of we preachers, we take our encounter to be a doctrine. And we start teaching it. When I see that you have to pray 21 days for something to happen, that's wrong. Daniel was not bothered with the, how long he'll pray. But on the 21st day, it happened. So that is not a doctrine to say, pray 21 days for this to happen. You can do it, it's okay. But it's not. Because it happened, which means, even in fact, if you go ahead, you'll see that the prince of Persia, stronghold again, territorial spirit, was withholding the answer of Daniel. So means God responded the same. He said, from the first time you said to pray, I released your answer. But it took a fight, the message to be delivered to you. Now you're thinking like 21 days when you receive, which means that the same devil is still holding your prayer. Uh -uh, vanangi. Let me speak like my mother. You must understand the right doctrines, how you approach the throne of grace. Some say you have to tell for one hour. A good Christian have to tell for one hour. It's not a doctrine. It's not a doctrine. It's not a doctrine. Some have to say, because I went to the mountain and I did this and this and this. In fact, the one hour Jesus just asked you, you did not. You are neighbor. So he never said that you must. You are neighbor. There are some people who pray for only 15 minutes, but they get answer for more than 100 people. Because the posture of their heart is right. Because they understand how the prayer in the spiritual world work. 
It's not how long you pray. Uh -uh. It's trusting and believing in the revelation of what the promises of God. So you might spend two hours, three hours, nothing comes. You have done that. You who are sitting here. It never worked. So be willing to learn. Repent. Repenting means you are going this direction, you turn back to Christ. Not to anyone. I was going this direction. This is how I've been doing things. But the reality is the scripture in a direct way this day. So we all change. This is how things need to be done according to the word. Any teaching that is not, is not, is not revelation of Christ Jesus. As per the Bible. If you have been holding it for years and years, you can put it aside. Today, just be open as the Spirit of God is going to lead us. The last scripture I want to share with you is Second Peter. This is basically, God is saying that he wants to live his life through us. He wants to reveal himself through us. Because I was eager to understand Second Peter, the will of God that he can exalt, he can be exalted through you. By how you live, by what you do in this earth. People say, praise God. But nowadays, this is to Nambianga to kill a kid to praise God. Even demon possessed people, they say, praise God. It's like a coward. It's like a cliche. So it's just to say, no matter what, how things are in your life, praise God. I have met several people. I'm very young in this line. But I thank God to having the right mentors. I've been able to meet different people who are so pressed and you can see. But when you go to their house to pray with them, every corner there's a Bible. So the time you start praying for them and then there's a manifestation of them and they, all of them, they hold the Bible. Toka! 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 So you stand and say, Mumalize your drama, na your karikacha, and then we will start. 30 minutes they are sweating. You can make a call and come back. They are sweating, but they call you to pray for them. And then in the name of Jesus, see you relax first. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, relax first. Let's deal with this issue. Missouri. There's a way how we deal with the things. This is the things I'm saying. We need to repent. We need to change. We need to go back to the truth. The book of Second Peter, uh, verse chapter 1. Then are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Yes. If you are ready, tell your brother or your sister, Iyo simu tu kimaliza tu, na iweka kando. I would like you, even if possible, you wake a flight mode so that there is no disturbance. So, Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 2 to 9. By my, my grace and peace, perfect well-being, all necessary good, spiritual prosperity and freedom from fear, and the agitating, passionate, mortal conflict, they multiplied in you. Personal precepts and correct. The divine power has bestowed upon us all things, all things that are to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory. By his own glory. So we already have the fullness of God. Anything pertaining to life and the spiritual need, you already have it. You have, which means you're already qualified, justified to receive answer from God. The sonship signature is already sealed, which is the spirit of God. Confirms that the spirit of God bears with our spirit that we are. We are the son of God. And if, if we are the son of God, then we have the inheritance. We have the right to access the inheritance from our father. And those are the promises that you have already received. So we are not praying to move God to do something for us. We are praying to align heaven and earth so that it may manifest in this earth. We have received everything pertaining, blessed already with anything and everything pertaining to life and goodness. There's nothing you're lacking. The reason you're not receiving it is because you are not keen enough to understand the way of God, how he does his things. With his sons. You have not come to understanding of how God does his transaction with the sons. That's where the blindness is. Amen? Amen? And also, because you are in the season to pray here, there are some few things I would like us to touch. 
Some of the hindrance of prayer. This is very clear. It's in the Bible. The hindrance of prayer, number one, that I would like us to touch is unforgiveness. Kindly. Don't just sweat and live here, sweat and tired. But whatever you came with in your heart, the grudge, the bitterness, and forgiveness, it's so much in your spirit. That will hinder you from hearing God. That will hinder you from receiving from God. So kindly, and forgiveness is very, very important for us to, to deal with. And I want to encourage you, if you're here today, kindly search your heart. Season of prayer takes a lot of consideration. You need to decide. Are you going to forgive? Are you going to let it go? Or you want to hold it on the burden, cry here, go back, you'll come ag again another day to cry. Search your heart. Search your heart. What could be the hindrance? It's in the Bible. So unforgiveness is number one. Number two, we all know that there's a lot of things. James 4, 3, says, wrong motive. Eh, wrong motive. Bless me, sasa ni hame kwa boma etu, ni wachane na ama ndugu zangu ni wachawi. And it may be God and I bless you wa ombe wa koke. So the wrong motive also, align the wrong motive. Why are you pray to brag? You want that anointing to be a man of God. Is it a title you are chasing? It could be something that is affecting you. The wrong motive. Why are you desiring what you are desiring? Have you ever tried to pray and, and you have a list, but you realize that the Spirit of God is leading you different direction? And you say, ah, God, I don't want to deal with this. I have my list here. Eh? So the wrong motive. Another thing is Hebrew. 11.6 without faith. We all know that. You're just praying but you're not sure if it will work out. And some people confess. The fact they're saying let's to jaribu. Then it's better you stop praying. Build your faith on the word of God. Meditate over the word. Lambano the word. Until the word becomes flesh in you. You speak it. You live it. Another thing is unconfessed sin. It has to do with the repentance also. There's some area you are finding yourself that is still just ring in your mind. Psalm 16, 18, 19. It's still ringing in your mind. Ringing in your mind, ringing in your mind, ringing in your mind. You have not embraced the blood of Jesus. You have not embraced forgiveness. There are some who say, Iyo ni ugonjo ya kwetu. Iyo ni ugonjo ya kwetu. So praying for such a person, Iyo ugonjo atabaki tunayo. Ni ame embrace ni yao. Una mnyanganya yao kwa nini? Eh? Ame embrace ni ugonjo ya kwetu. Izi shida ni za kwetu. Inafanyikanga hivi na hivi na hivi. So there's a pattern that you have embraced and you have accepted. But you want it to change. For example, I was on Zoom and teaching about some traditions we do. You go home, kwa matanga, munambio, lazima ni muzea mekufa, katu wa maratatu kwa mgongo, because ni muzea. Bure, utasumbuka. And then you go through that rituals. But whatever words they speak when they are doing that ritual, it means something. They are connecting you to the same, same system in your effect. And then unatoka matanga, unarudi nyumbani, unasema mbona kwetu kuja ibadulika. But you are part of it. You are part of it. You co have a covenant with them. So some of these things you need also to change. We just don't pray here. There's a breakthrough. And then again you go, you attach yourself to the same thing. The same problem. Persistency. Do not cease praying. This is fire that we are being ignited today. As we live here, you go home. Remember, prayer always works. So persistency. Persistency. We have double-minded and then we have pride. Double-minded people should not expect anything from God. I am praying it doesn't work. I have a way of fixing it. God has no plan A or B. <laughs> He's the plan. So there's no plan A and plan B in Christ. If you're trusting God, let me do this. And then ikikata and rajaribu daktari. Daktari wa meniambia hivi mtumishu wa mungu niombe lakini ikikata. Wacha wafanya vili wanataka. Then you cannot. You have to believe that you are under the freedom of 
Christ Jesus. By his stripes we were healed. Amen? Amen? So are we ready to pray? Yes. I hate to share that because in Galatians 4, 1 in Asema, as long as we are still behaving and thinking like children, we will not receive eh, what God has intended for us. That's in Galatians 4, 1. Because our thinking is still like children, we have to know the truth of Christ Jesus and we have to embrace it. Karibuni watuote. Thank you for your time being today here. We are super excited because we know, we know, we have a victory already. So whatever you came here to pray for, is it a nation? Is it your ministry? Is it your family? Is it your business? I need you to see the power of God already moving in that for, for you. Start, you know, imagination is not just meant for you to imagine evil or business or prosperity. Imagination connects you in the spiritual realm. Imagine how things, unless you receive it in your spirit and accept it that the change is going to happen, it's also hard for you to receive it. So let your faith set you in a position where you see the promises of God manifesting in that area that you are trusting God. And as I said, if you have prayed for something today and you have done with it, continue in thanksgiving. Continue in thanksgiving. Never doubt. Never doubt. There are some situations where you pray for things and then after that, tomorrow you say, maybe yesterday I did not pray well. Let me start again over. That is unbelief already you're dealing with. So the best thing, sit under the teaching. Sit under the word, right doctrine. Until you go to level, you say, I can deal with this. That's why in the spiritual, there's also racking. There's some things you cannot deal with. And that's why we have gathered here. There's power in unity. There is power in unity. I was reading about, and I'm doing study about territorial spirits. <laughs> and I realized that there's a lot and a lot of things believers we miss out. Because we don't take time to understand why is this pattern, this thing happening the way it's happening. Because it's a problem, you think, just, I'll just face it to deal with it. But there's some things that need you a revelation. You have to know what is the cause of this thing, the way it's happening here. Well, how comes in this home people are not getting married? Always first people are dying. So you cannot rebuke death. There's a covenant that was raise, raised in that. So when I studied about territorial uh, stronghold, I realized that we can fight some battles, but because we are not approaching them with the right weapons, we cannot bring them down. So the first thing starts with the word. The power of your prayer is in the word. So we pray the scripture also. Think about what you are desiring to change. What you are about to pray for. What does the word of God say about it? Amen? Amen. We always quote scriptures, but are you accepted that that scripture is the final? Have you accepted that that scripture is the final? Because if you think the word of God will not work for that situation, then your prayer has no power also. <laughs> if you feel that the word of God will not work, if you declare it, then your prayer has no power. Because we pray the word. So first you have to accept that what I'm praying, the word of God in Asema, he, na, he, na, he about this. And I believe, and I am claiming my promise, and I'm receiving it. It will come to pass. Why? Because I have embraced the life of Christ. I have accepted the nature of God. I have re been revealed the finished work of the cross. When you pray from that dimension, then you cannot pray amiss. And the last, that we are spirit-led. So as the spirit lead us to pray, let it be. As the spirit lead us to pray, let us be. I know we will continue to pray and we have more time today. We have more time to pray. Yeah? So I want you to fast before we start praying. If there's anything you want to deal with in your heart, you have three minutes to deal with it now. Let it go. Let it go from your heart. Let it go. Because we are about to start praying. And let us not have any hindrance in their spirit 
wondering what will happen. If there's anything you have written down and you'd like us to pray for you together, make sure that you get the right scripture for that issue that you want to deal with. What does the word of God say about it? By his stripe we were healed. I believe and I'm going to hold on this word. No matter what the doctor is telling us, I believe he paid the price. He took away the curse. He was placed on the cross. So I'm giving you three minutes. That is you and God. Search your heart. 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 Let it go, that unforgiveness. Let it go, that bitterness. That doubt, that doubt that you're having, let it go. What does the word of God say about it? You have gone through issues of family and families and family. But God is saying that you have been blessed with everything pertaining to godliness and life. You deserve the best of the best from your father. What is that issue that have been, you have been trusting God for long? What could be the reason why it's not coming to pass? Why are you not getting the answer? Search your heart. Search your heart. Search your heart. It might be painful. It's okay. You can shed tears. Sometimes you let it go in pain. It's okay. That unforgiveness. Hardness of heart. This is how things are done in our church. No. This is how things are done. As per Jesus' word. Search your heart. God, I have been trusting for transformation in our family. Things are not working out. What could be the reason? I have used all the weapons of warfare. I have used the name of Jesus. I have used the blood of Jesus. I have prayed with the people. Meaning I have fasted also. I have worshipped. I have praised. I have quoted the word. But things have not changed. Holy Spirit revealed to me. How I start afresh today. I am not living here the same way I came. With that burden. I am not living here the same way I came. With that pain. That sickness. That oppression. Father we thank you. We can raise on our feet. We can raise on our feet. Father we thank you. Father we thank you. Father we thank you. We are here gathered in your presence. To pray. We are praying for us heart. We are praying for our families. We are praying for our marriages. We are praying for this nation. We are praying for our businesses. We are praying for the generation. We are praying for the ministry, the church. Lord, Abba Father, Elohim, you made this day to be possible out of love. And we are trusting you, God. That because you brought us this, you do not gather us in vain. You have good plans for us. Father, we are living here like a tree planted beside the river that in every season we shall bear fruit. Father, we are established in your word. Your word is working for us. Our victory is in our heart, Father. We bless you, King of Kings. We bless you, Yeshua. We bless you, Adonai. We bless you, Chidekin. We bless you, Rafa Shalom. We call you. Marra se pereka sobradi talarande. Reke shanta ribo shepari ko sobradi alanan terera. Just start and thanking God for being in this place today. Thank him because great things are happening already in this place. Papa setol mariko sete riba zanda. Give him praise in your spirit. Just worship him.
Just worship him. Just worship him. Just worship him. Worship him. Just worship him. Set yourself so free. Allow the spirit of God to minister to you. Allow the spirit of God to bring you to the point of understanding your relationship with him. Make us so pradicante rebosh. Ribobobosh katarraba santa yala repo sataya. Paso prasankayanas. Ripa payante salipros ilericat. Open your mouth and just speak to your father.